Hi, and welcome to another live Google Hangout. I'm Dr. Jay Harness, Medical Director at Breast Cancer Answers. And you know, we have really two wonderful guests with us today, and we're going to be talking about survivorship from a different point of view. But as I've read the bios on these two ladies and have gotten ready for today's live Google Hangout, I'm reminded about my dear friend Steve Cranford, who developed my own website starting five years or so ago, and Steve said to me, why in the world do you guys use survivor as, uh, as the term here? I mean, it sounds like you're fighting a war for crying out loud. People should, I don't like that term. So interesting with, with our two guests today that we're going to put a whole completely different spin on that. Our two ladies are from Canada. Uh, the first is Gail Moore, and the other is Ro Clark. So, Gail Moore, welcome to a live Google Hangout. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Okay, and you're located where in Canada, Gail? Victoria, British Columbia. Okay, and do I hear a bird in the background? Is that... oh, there are seven birds in the background. <laughs> All right, and that's going to be part of probably what we're going to be talking about with you there. <laughs> and there you go. And Ro Clark, welcome to a live Google Hangout. Thank you very much. It's very nice to be here. You betcha. And where are you in Canada, Ro? I'm in Vancouver. Okay. And you were telling me before you came on air that I think you said you were born in Canada. However, you were raised in in Ireland. Yes. Yeah. yeah you still have your a bit of an Irish. A bit of an Irish accent there. Great uh, to have it's you. Hard to get rid of it completely. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you. Well, Gail Moore, we're all interested in your story. So why don't you tell us? Uh, I know that you were diagnosed uh, several years ago with inflammatory breast cancer, which is a very rare form of breast cancer. But please share with us your story. Well, I wish I could say it was, you know, finding a lump and, and you know, panicking and going to a doctor, but it, it seems a little more drawn out than that. I started with pain in my breast and pain in my underarm, and, you know, the first month you let it pass, the second month you start to wonder what's going on. And so I did go to my doctor, and I mean, we're feeling around and, and checking, and nothing's coming up. And my doctor is, is rather proactive, and she sent me for ultrasounds and, and nothing. And finally, I think she reached a conclusion that it, because they were happening around my period, that it must be um, hormone-related. And uh, I guess about two weeks before um, things really changed for me, the texture of my breast started to harden a little bit, you know, not be as soft. And then literally overnight I went into redness and an inverted nipple and it was just scary. And it started a journey. Um, my, my doctor treated it first like mastitis. Sorry about the bird. <laughs> um, go on, go on. Go ahead. Go. She did it first as mastitis, but that you know antibiotics didn't clear it up, and she wasted no time. She booked me in for a biopsy, as well as an MRI, and I don't think she could really answer why she chose to do the second step. But we went for the biopsy, and the results from that came back. We thought negative, but now we know a little more as inconclusive. And I understand the odds of that happening are pretty, pretty low, but the MRI screamed. So I had to go back and do uh, a needle aspiration biopsy, and that's when they determined it was inflammatory breast cancer. I got the news on a Wednesday. On a Friday, I was in the cancer clinic, and on the Monday, I started chemotherapy, and it just it was also quick in so many ways, but from the point my breast physically changed in May till August seems like such a long time, but it did go quickly, and in that time frame I had a lot of time to look up what possibilities were, were going on for me. Most of it scared the crap out of me, but you know, until you know for sure, you just don't know. 
Well, can I interrupt for one second? You have described almost perfectly the classic history of the presentation of inflammatory breast cancer. Uh, I'm almost thinking we could take this segment of your description uh, and just save it as a description about how inflammatory breast cancer presents, uh, Gail, because it's, it's classic. Yeah. Um, as, as I'm sure you've learned uh, over the years, this is a very rare form of breast cancer. It does tend to strike younger women. Uh, it is typically misdiagnosed initially uh, as mastitis, if you will. But hats off to your doctor there in BC because, uh, and I think you said it was a she, she did absolutely all of the right things um, and got you diagnosed and got you treated. And in my view, probably saved your life because of how quickly she moved, uh, moved ahead. So go ahead with, uh, but I wanted to interrupt you for a second because you have so perfectly described the classic presentation of inflammatory breast cancer. Well, it's nice to hear something normal for a change. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it was it was obviously devastating. And you know, when you f we go online, and and this is where I've I've said in the book, and I'll say it out loud: the internet can really not be your friend. Um, it's it's. Just I, I learned just because you read it doesn't mean it applies to you. Right. And I've also learned that while it's an inflammatory breast cancer, there are so many other little factors that come in that it's truly an individual cancer. It's my cancer now. And um, I hit acceptance, I guess, and I think that is a key thing, and that's also something we talk in the book, that I didn't wallow in the... Um, pity parties or the anger or that not to say it didn't happen holy heck did they happen but I wanted to I wanted to make cancer not the focus or the the meaning in my life but that it was going to be part of my life and so I was controlling what I could control and uh, went forward through treatments I actually worked through treatments which I understand is incredibly uh, rare, but I did, and I honestly thought that by, so my, my chemotherapy treatments were eight treatments, and I honestly thought by the fifth or the sixth that I would be done with work, and that was it, and I'd gone as far as I could, and working for me was living as normally as I could be, living life as if you know, I have something I have to deal with, but I'm going to live anyway. And that really formed the basis for our Thrive philosophy. But I actually worked the whole entire time. Okay. Very good, very good. Now, you keep referring to a book. Is yes. your book Is your book actually out? And I'm assuming maybe the name of the book is Thrive? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good guess. Uh, Rasheen and I have co-authored the book. And we have just actually finished writing it. We are timing it to be released with the movie, which we hope will be in September. Okay, well, hold on for a second. And let's uh, uh, bring uh, Ro Clark in here. Ro, how do, the, and you guys are in two different cities, so how in the world did the two of you meet? We actually were working together uh, back in 1999 when Gail lived in Ontario and we became friends over the phone and I lived in Victoria at the time and then Gail moved out to Victoria and we worked together and uh, we just created a bond immediately and have been friends um, very good friends ever since and um, she just her, her total approach to um, her breast cancer journey it blew me away every step you know from from the time she told me she had it all the way through treatment, I, you know, I, she would phone me to tell me how she was doing, and and I'd be like, "How are you not in a heap on the floor? Like you're you're just, <laughs> you know, so positive." And as she said, she she did, you know, have her pity parties. She just didn't unpack and and set up camp there, you know. She she just picked herself up and kept going. And um, I think we're both very um, uh, quite stubborn people, and I think that's probably how we um how we meshed quite so well and probably how Gail was was able to um, 
kick breast cancer's butt. <laughs> oh, fantastic. So, Gail, then you developed your Thrive philosophy. So why don't we have you elaborate a little bit about your Thrive philosophy and the fact that you're doing a book and also in your bio that I've got here, you've also completed a documentary movie, it sounds like, correct? Yes, absolutely. So Thrive actually came out of the word survivor. And um, I was having a very difficult time with that word. I, as I progressed through treatment, um, really with inflammatory breast cancer, all women talk about that five-year mark. Well, that five-year mark was a different mark for women with inflammatory breast cancer. Um, just living to five years was turning out to be probably the biggest challenge. And I also was really upset because I have had people pass away from breast cancer in my life and I was really mad because survivor implies win-lose you know what do you call a person who did not survive breast cancer well they're dead they don't have anything that has been given to them so the cancer lexicon was really lacking and I was ranting and raving a little bit with Rasheen and, and our partners. And finally, it was Rasheen's partner who spoke up and said, so really, while you're waiting to survive, you're thriving. And oh my God, light bulbs went off and, and everything is like thriving, thrive, wow. And, and that was it. That was my word because... Um, you know, I looked at my friend Tracy, who was going through her second, um, you know, recurrent, well, her first recurrence, but second round with breast cancer, and that girl was was laughing and living life and, and carrying on, and, and that's what I was doing, too, and I thought, you know, to call her a survivor, I get why people use the surviving lexicon after you've gone through... Uh, chemotherapy and radiation and surgery and and all of that yeah you you've earned the word survive because and survivor because gosh getting through that alone is is worth it but there needs to be a more inclusive term and so thrive and thriving happened and we decided that we were going to do something about it and it was really funny because Rasheen was thinking calendar girls and and local stuff and getting the word out that way and, and, and Scott was like, oh, you guys think way too small. And uh, he says, hello, movie maker here. And then the documentary was born. I think Rasheen and Scott had more of an idea about what the documentary meant than I did. I was thinking, okay, you know, movie, whoopee, kind of thing. And then at the around the same time, I learned about the World Conference on Breast Cancer. And we thought, you know what, there's the great launch point for let's change the lexicon or let's get this message out. And we went to the conference. And we did filming and boy, I had no idea how many times you could actually go down an escalator. <laughs> we were at the conference. <laughs> um, where, where, where was the conference being held at? In Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Okay. And there were women from literally all over the world. I met from Africa and Australia and, and Europe, and it was the most phenomenal thing I have ever done in my life was going there. And then after we got back, it, I, I started working on a book, and Rasheen and Scott and, and I, we were contemplating where we were going to go next, and life happens at this point. There was the global financial crisis, somebody got married, had a child, <laughs> so things got put off, and um, when it came time to coming back to it, which was now, I guess, I've got to think, almost two years ago, we realized that Thrive and the Thrive philosophy was more than just about breast cancer, or just about my journey, but it was about anyone facing illness or adversity in some capacity and how we could spread that message and expand that message and take it further. So this is what we've done. The purpose behind uh, the documentary is 
um, to you know, to redefine the 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 lexicon, the cancer lexicon around surviving and thriving. But um, we we hope to inspire people, people who um, who have who have been through cancer or something adverse. It doesn't even have to be an illness. Or people who are in the thick of it now, they will see in our movie some people who um, they they inspire me to this day, and I think they will inspire everyone. I, I've yet to see um, anyone not you know totally cry we've made I don't know how many editors cry at this point um, so um, and our movie is at uh, Toronto it's currently being considered for TIFF and we hope to hear back from that very soon <laughs> and is there anything else that you want to share with our audience at this moment as far as your project or anything of that nature we have a Kickstarter campaign um, to help us get our book published and um, and I believe it's the, the link is is on my um, on my little note there. And um, yeah, so if, if people would like to uh, pre-order the book, pre-order the the movie, uh, that would really help us in, in getting the, the book published. And and then we'll we'll be updating our Facebook page once the, the movie is released. And uh, and if people log on to Thrive the Movie on Facebook, they can find all the details they need. Um, with what's going to, to happen in the future. Great. We're going to put up the information um, of your Kickstarter and everything, so if anyone wants to um, see or donate or anything like that, the trailer's mm -hmm. up on there. Um, mm -hmm. Please support these two young ladies. They are amazing, and they're doing amazing things in the breast cancer community. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining us in this Google Hangout. I really do appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah, no problem. Okay, this is the end of our Google Plus Hangout. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.